here's the paint cart. There are a total of seven colors. There are two blues, a turquoise, and a regular blue. And they're marked on the top with a P for the regular, regular blue and a G for the turquoise. Then that's because the regular blue um, is a bit more of a purplish blue and the turquoise is more of a green blue. The magenta and the red, the magenta has a P because it's more of a purple red and the regular red has an O because it's more of an orange red. There's one type of yellow and then of course there's white and black. You can see the color differences when they're in the cups as well. The red on the left is the orangey red. The next one is the purple red or the magenta. The yellow, if you're wondering, is a bit of a greenish yellow, although it is fairly even in terms of yellows. The purple blue is the next one and then the turquoise, which is the greenish blue. So even if you do not have the paint in the bottles, it still should be fairly easy to tell which is which. So your five colors, uh, the color wheel colors should go in these little cups. Um, and you'll keep refilling them in order to use them. You don't need much. You can see in the bottom of the cup, there's not a whole lot in that cup. So don't take a lot of paint to start with uh, um, or else it's just more paint to, uh, you know, that might get wasted later. Um, and you can always refill. The black and the white, um, you're going to add in separately, but don't put them into cups. You don't need them. And then what you're going to do is use a palette and then um, scoop your colors from the cup and mix them on the palette uh, and combine them with... Um, well, we're mostly going to use the white today, um, but if you do end up using the black, <clears throat> you're going to mix your colors, uh, your tints and your shades um, here on the palette. So today we're going to do a practice exercise painting trees. And so you can use your sketchbook paper for this, tape it down to a board and um, just put some tape going uh, with the edge of the paper. Don't, do, don't put it across the corners because then it, it looks really bad later when you go to peel it off. Um, and um, use the blue tape, make sure you use the blue tape for this. So it doesn't really matter. We're just making this up. This is just invented. So you're going to want to do a horizon line. So just with a pencil, just sketch out where your horizon line is going to be. And then the sky will be up top and the ground will be below. You can use a large brush for this. And you're going to use uh, some blue, some of the straight blue or the purple blue. And then you'll need a palette and then uh, some white paint as well. Um, so put some white paint in the palette. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tinted blue because this blue here is too strong for the sky. Uh, it's, it's much too dark. And if you look at um, any of the photos that we used uh, last week for the, um, uh, for the drawing assignment, you'll see that uh, the sky is much lighter. So you can see uh, you don't need a lot of blue and um, you're going to end up using a lot of white to make a tinted blue, and that's going to be your sky color. Um, could add a little bit of the turquoise, maybe just to kind of warm it up a little bit. So you can see that I have a lot of paint here because I'm going to be covering a large area of the paper. And then uh, when you go to make your sky, keep make your brush strokes go across like this. It's a little streaky because it's not totally mixed. So we're painting the sky first because it is the furthest part of the image, it's the extreme background. And so it gets done first. We'll work 
build the composition from back to front. Ugh. try to smooth out that streakiness just by going back across it. And um, if you add a little bit of water to the brush, that will actually help. But the paint's still wet, so this is working pretty good. All right, so there's the sky. Okay, next we're going to do the ground, and uh, so I'm going to wash my brush, and I'm going to use this big brush again. So wash it out in some water, in a cup of water, or at the sink, and then now we're going to mix the color for the ground. And um, again, you're going to need white, and now you're going to need some yellow, and then um, your choice of blue. Either, either blue for this, uh, or you can um, create multiple um, different uh, greens using the two different blues. Um, and the reason why you, we're using white in both of these mixtures is that sunlight, um, when it illuminates the, uh, uh, the ground, it, it's not, usually it's not a super dark green. Uh, when it's um, in the sunlight, it's going to be like a lighter green. Uh, but it also, it's just easier to paint dark over light, so we're going to create a light green tone to um, paint imagery on top of. So I'm going to start with this blue, and just use a little bit, and then uh, I'm going to scoop some yellow, and you can see that a small amount of blue and a large amount of yellow creates a bit of a balanced green. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. And I actually need more paint than this because I'm going to be painting a large area. So I need more paint than I started with there. So. See, we've got a, a tinted green now. And now this is going to be the, um, this is going to be the color for the ground. And this is just an underpainting. So it's basically a layer that gets painted first so that other um, images can get painted over it and you don't have the white of the paper showing. Again, work with, work with a large brush, and you can also try the turquoise and see how that looks. It's going to be a much brighter green, like a much more vibrant green. But again, make sure you add a, t a little bit of white to that so that you're not just using that straight green. All right, so you can see that the turquoise creates uh, more of a, a vibrant green, and the purple blue, the regular blue, creates more of like a, a earth tone green. You can see the difference here. Where, um, and I'm kind of uh, sort of mixing them together using the brush, just really roughly without a whole lot of detail. Um, and if you use the bright green, it's more makes more sense to use it at the bottom, closer to the bottom of the page, because typically colors closer to you are much more vibrant than the ones that are further away, which tend to be a bit more subdued. All right, so that's it. And now that's a good base for 
creating some treescapes and that's going to be the next portion of this.